Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and Peel Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, March 20th, 2020. And this is our weekly video, our regular look back at last week's eBay auction results, what's going on, a few things at Catawiki and uh, the global member pages and all that good stuff. One of the things I wanted to mention before we got started, last week I mentioned that we added on to the uh, homepage of the website on the uh, research and information section uh, here in the National Palace Museum in Taiwan's collection, they have a virtual tour that you can take on their site. And you can go there, you can pick the type of tour you want. It takes a little getting used to to use it, but it's pretty good. And you can go through and you can see what the inside of the place looks like. It's quite an enormous facility and, it, and there's 800,000 objects in their collection. It's quite a thing. But what we did was we took those that video, that virtual tour, and we worked through it. We pulled out the things that were in there, and we created our own video out of it, and, and we provided the narration. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. We posted it yesterday. It's on the uh, on the video. That is this, isn't it? It's, it's right there. There it is. This is the, the uh, cover for it over on our YouTube channel. And it's about a 50, 55-minute video. It's fairly long. It's, it went longer than I thought it would, but that's... We got into it, and it was, it was fun to do, and we thought, why not? Uh, nobody's going to be traveling anywhere for a while, so we thought we'd let everybody sort of transport themselves for fun to a, to a place they may not see for some time. All right. Now, uh, the thing I wanted to mention was that when you take the t if you take the tour yourself, you'll be presented with rooms like this, and it's uh, pretty interesting, and you can, you can turn the rooms around and play with it and so forth. Uh, but it takes a little time to get to each of the objects, and the ones that have these icons, these letters over them, are the uh, items that they have information on. They don't include everything in the collection, obviously. But uh, we boiled it down and put it into the video, and I, I hope you watch it and you enjoy it. And, and tell me what you think of it. We, maybe if, if people like it, we could do more, uh, more videos on tours of museums just for the fun of it once in a while. You know, do the Met, do the Frere, the Sackler Gallery, and all that. So we'll see. All right. Now, uh, over on, uh, oh, on the homepage, a couple of things we added last week. I wanted to mention, too, is that down at the bottom, uh, we created an area where we can pull in the most recent comments from the forum. So if you haven't used the forum and you want to see what they're talking about, you can go there and uh, uh, check and see what the, what the conversations are. If you click on them, it'll take you over to the forum. If you don't belong to it, you can sign up. It's completely free to sign up for. Um, and then we have our, our page here with our most recent blog posts are on it. All righty, and uh, if you want to join the join the, the the global members pages with all the stuff that's on from Invaluable and uh, 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 Live Auctioneers and Bid Square and all that, the major auction houses will not be doing any sales for the foreseeable future that I can see, other than some online stuff. So Sotheby's, Christie's, and Bonhams are going to be pretty quiet for the next couple of months. But they are doing some online auctions, and those are the ones that most of us can afford to shop at. So you might want to check it out. All right, now. Let's see how things went on over at eBay last week. This is last week's eBay uh, Today page for the things we picked out that uh, we thought were pretty good. And a number of the things did quite well. And we're going to go through these uh, this morning. Okay. Or today. All right. One of the things I wanted to show you was this. This is not an extremely valuable plate. But it was a very interesting Kung Shi plate that was on Katawiki. And I think it went for a, a relative bargain. Uh, it's an unusual pattern. And some of you that own or bought a lot of Kang Shi pieces are probably looking at it saying, yeah, that is an unusual one. It has a rather interesting inner uh, border arrangement in dark blue um, uh, with light blue and darker blue flowers running around it. And then in the center is a, is a, is a, a blossoming flowers coming up out of, the cent, out, of the, out of the middle of the piece. And then this very gutsy sort of uh, outer rim filled with uh, blue and white flowers again repeating. But I thought it was a nice thing. And as I said, it went for $157, and it was in very good condition. It only had a couple of little rim frits on it. And this was an unreserved uh, piece. Uh, on, on the Catawiki side lately, what we've been doing is just trying to include more and more unreserved things because the reserves sometimes that the sellers want, uh, I think, are just a bit unrealistic. And um, uh, I understand why they do them. I think, it's, I think if you're going to auction something, you're crazy to put big reserves on things uh, because you're, you're going to have a very poor sell-through rate. But at any rate, uh, that plate was very nice, and it, and it brought a decent price, and somebody got a very interesting item out of it. Great looking thing. And then we had this. This was posted on the uh, featured item page last week, not because it was the most expensive thing by any measure, 
But it was a sweet example. It's just a nice, nice kang shi vase uh, with this little garlic uh, uh, device here, this uh, uh, swollen area going up the, up, the, up the neck. And it had a very nice, long, attenuated neck on it with a delicately perched bird. Nice colors, good, solid white porcelain. And it went pretty reasonably, $514. As I said, this was unreserved. I think it was a very nice piece, and it measured about six inches tall. Good example, though. That was a nice item, and, and it's not a bank, you know, it's not going to break the bank. So it's, it, it was worthwhile to think about. And then over on uh, eBay was this. This was sort of a bargain of the week, if you, if you like big vases. And I think the seller sort of shot himself in the foot on this because he called it 1900s rose medallion vase. And, and it wasn't. This was an 1850 to 1870 vase. It was quite a bit older than he, he stated. And uh, I think somebody, some, somebody probably bought it knowing that it was older than circa 1900. And they bought it for $695. And this was a 24-inch vase, two feet tall. I think that was a very, very reasonable buy, um, uh, uh, given what some of these have sold for in the, in the very recent past. You know, just a week or two ago, these, uh, in the last month or two, we've seen these sell for, in that size, 24 inches or 60 centimeters tall, uh, sell in the 1100 to $1,400 range. So, bravo, whoever got that. Okay, and this was from a seller in Pennsylvania. Nice thing, though. And then on to this, the pair, the two uh, the Chinese uh, silver card cases. One of them was inscribed in Chinese, and the other one had English writing on it. I preferred the one on the right because I love the flowers on it and, the, and that deep relief work. But they were both very, very nice. The one on the left had dragons and it's done very much uh, in the manner of how they did uh, uh, late Qing dragons with all the clouds and, and all these devices, very typical. And uh, this, this pair of boxes, this was the good part. The pair went for $818, which I think is perfectly reasonable, $400 a piece, roughly four or five. We've seen these silver boxes sell for six or 700 individually. So I think that was a nice buy for someone. 77 Pud is the seller out in Ohio, and he, he generally gets nice things. And that was a good-looking pair of silver, silver card cases, I thought. And then on here, uh, there was some uh, nice Nuneo Straits uh, porcelain. And these pink plates are quite unusual. These, these pink ground plates, like the, with this color, the solid color, are among the rarer of, of the of the. Of the uh, uh, Nonya Straits uh, examples, and these were a nice, a nice pair of them, and they did very well. They brought uh, five thousand nine hundred and forty-six dollars, uh, but they were they were the, of the rarer types, and they were nicely done. And the seller had up a couple of them. The next one over was um, um, uh, this other pair of bowls. We'll blow it up. There it is. And these went for sixty-four hundred dollars. Another pair. And uh, again, they had inscriptions in the center. Beautifully done, though. Nice enamels. Beautifully done butterflies and so forth. And uh, as I said, they brought sixty-four hundred and thirteen dollars. Uh, and uh, some of you might be surprised by that for the, these kinds of porcelains. And then uh, lastly, uh, and then oh, then on to this: the Chinese robe with the rondelles on it. This was a nice robe. I thought this was a very, very nice robe. Well done, late Qing example. Uh, had a good-looking uh, uh, set of sleeves on it. I love the way they did the sleeves. And uh, let's see if they have more pictures to show. There it is. There it is, wide open. That's the that should have been the cover shot for this, not the one with the sleeves folded in. And uh, I think whoever got this got a very good buy. Uh, this was a very, very nice robe. It appeared to be in in quite good condition, not all worn out anywhere. Um, the needlework looked good, nice, nice, tight needlework, good colors, so on and so forth, and very, very little wear. I suspect this spent a lot of time in a trunk, and it went for under $2,000, okay? We've had these in the past, and they bring, um, uh, we've gotten four or 5000 for them pretty easily. We had one with three large rondelles on it a couple of years ago, and I think we got 9000 for it. So somebody um, got a great buy on this robe, really did, really good buy, and in beautiful condition. Bravo, whoever got it. And if you're thinking about it and you, and you didn't, and as I always say, leave a bit on the thing. Good Lord. And then on to this, this uh, late Qing, early Republic period uh, silk work of, of a female uh, attendant carrying uh, a tray with tea and basket of flowers over her shoulder. This is a nice piece. Had a little bit of edge wear around it and so forth, but this was fairly large. But nice soft colors, nice soft peaches and pinks and salmon and all that. 
And uh, the needlework on it was quite good. The details were good. I didn't see a lot of damage in the middle. And this went um, fairly reasonably, $789. I think that was also a good buy. Uh, a late Ching. Right now with the turmoil, you might find some bargains out there. You're going to find some things that do very, very well as always. But keep your eyes out right now. Do some serious looking. If you're stuck at home and you can't get out for, 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 the, for the next few weeks at least, um, uh, scout around on the web. Leave bids everywhere because there's some things I think are going to fall through the cracks. All right. And then on to this was this nice looking uh, Chinese silk uh, dragon rondelle. This was a pretty good one. It was late Ching, but it had good colors, and the dragon was very nicely done with a lot of gold thread in it, as you can see. There's a ton of gold thread in this thing, and uh, very tightly woven, and it did pretty well. The seller had two of these up. This was just one of them, and it brought $779, and then if you hop over to here, here was one on a dark blue or black ground, uh, very, very similar, and uh, but a, a visually a little more successful, I think, because of the colors, and this one did a little little better. It brought $1,112. And this was Handy's Antiques. They had these uh, these two rondelles and they had the robe that was up. So they did pretty well in the rondelles, but I think the robe was, was a little soft for them. And then on to this, the big Fitzhugh terrine. This was a nice export terrine. Very well decorated, in nice condition, had the original finial and these rope twist handles on it. It's a late 18th century example. And uh, Fitzhugh came in a, in a pretty wide range of qualities. And one of the things you want to look at when you look at Fitzhugh, if you look at the bottom, if I get the mouse to go down there without pulling up the bar, I guess I can't. Anyway, you see the spearhead uh, arrangement, these spear borders that you see on these Fitzhugh pieces. And the more they look like arrows and spears, the tighter that they are drawn, the higher quality the work is typically. And this one had nice high quality work, as you can see here. It really did. And uh, here's a picture of the end. And the late and the other Fitzhugh pieces, things with this, these these arrow borders, they they on the lesser examples, they actually did them just as little dots. Um, they didn't bother outlining each one as a as a spearhead or an arrowhead. Uh, around the bottom and, and on the other borders. At any rate, this one did pretty well. It brought $572. But as I sa I've said many times, export porcelain in quality relative to price is a heck of a lot better buy um, uh, for Chinese porcelain than the Chinese domestic market stuff because the Chinese uh, collectors don't buy this stuff. And the reason they don't buy it is that they've never really seen much of it. There isn't much of it in China. Uh, nearly virtually all of it that was made was exported. The only pieces that remained in China were the defects. Um, and occasionally you'll see somebody that had lived in China and they came back with a Fitzhugh platter or something and there'll be a big wad of uh, kiln grit in the middle of it or something. And it's because it didn't meet inspection to be exported, but they sold it within the country just as a plate to someone and, and they still are around. But, but the best pieces were all exported, virtually 100% of them. So, and the quality of the work was excellent on, on many, many examples, especially the 18th and, and early 19th century pieces. And then over to here, this dandy little quartz uh, uh, carved Kuan Yin figure that was made into a lamp. Um, this, we've all seen these before. It happened, they, 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 did, they did quite a few of them, especially in the 1920s. They were very, very popular as boudoir lamps. Sometimes you did, they did them in pairs. This was a nice one, though. Um, the lamp fitting is rather worn looking, I guess. But at any rate, um, this, this was a steal. $73 for, for, for a carved quartz uh, Buddha or Kuan Yin. This was very, very inexpensive. Uh, the, we've seen these on here sell for four, five, six hundred dollars at times. I think someone was very smart and they got a good buy. This came out of Middleman Brokers down in Fort, Fort Lauderdale, uh, Florida. And then on to this, this very nice uh, late 18th century uh, Famille Rose dish with inscribed center. This is a fairly rare type of plate. The back of it was all done in very heavy red enamels. And it has almost no foot rim on it, very shallow edge. And then this sort of scooped out cavetto with, with blue, blue uh, uh, turquoise ground. And in the middle, you can see this sort of pseudo Quan, uh, uh, chin lung mark or something on the, on the, on the back of it or uh, one, one of the marks. It isn't done very well. It was, it was, it was done by somebody that wasn't uh, you know, very advanced at calligraphy. But a very nice looking plate. And these are pretty desirable, even though this one had a bit, a few room frits and nicks to it. Brought fifteen hundred and eighty-five dollars, which is a nice price, but it's a fairly rare type of plate. Uh, they didn't do a lot of them with the inscriptions. 
and porcelain, Chinese porcelain, when, it got in, when they get inscriptions on them, become very, very desirable. People really want them, especially in China. And then on to this, this uh, very nice uh, incense burner with three, three-legged three incense burner. It's a 19th century example with this uh, lime green ground that sort of came into fashion during the period. And the, in the in the blue uh, bluish turquoise uh, orange peel interior, there's a little bit of wear to the inside because it, I think it was probably used fairly often. And there it has a mark on the bottom, uh, a Dalguan mark. I'm not sure this was a Dalguan piece. I think it might have been a little later, but not much. And uh, it had this very nice uh, old stand with it with, 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 a, with a matching lid. It was a good package. And here it is. Here are the details. Uh, you see the little blue enamels on the masks of the, uh, of the creatures and the butterflies and all that. This was a good-looking thing. And it ended up selling for $5,655. All right. Uh, they said the stands were Z-Tan. I didn't think they were. They didn't look like Z-Tan to me. But at any rate, that's what they sold for. And then the, this Peking glass overlaid bottle. This is a late Qing example. Had a Chin Lun mark on the bottom, as I recall. But it was nice quality and had lots of color. Yellow, green, pink, red, and blue over this sort of uh, hazy white, almost what they call a snowflake ground. It wasn't really a snowflake ground, but... Uh, semi-transparent, semi, or, or semi-trans, yeah, semi-transparent. Nice looking thing. And it did pretty well. It brought $1,705. I think Peking glass is woefully underestimated in the market. I think it's, it's really strange how it hasn't taken off at all. Funny. Anyway, uh, now we move over here to this, this late Ming, early Qing bronze uh, goose incense burner on a, on a, on a nice, it looks like a carved boxwood stand. Nice looking beak on them. I like the way the feathers were done. And it did pretty well. It brought $1,253. Uh, but, uh, but, a, but a nice shape. And, a, and it was probably originally, a, there were a pair of these. And uh, one of them, they get separated. Families split things up. And, you know, one kid takes one and the other, one, the other kid takes the other. And that's the end of the pair. And then over to this, our, my, that little Ming uh, seated uh, lacquered bronze p piece that I, I mentioned it a couple times just because I liked it so much. I thought it was very attractive. And it was small. It was a nice thing you could put somewhere. And uh, it ended up doing pretty well. It brought $1,913, which didn't just surprise me terribly uh, because it was a nice example, an original condition with its original uh, patina. Nobody had ever tried to clean it up or do anything with it. So it, uh, it, 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 it had a good look to it good solid old look to it nice surface and then on to this the little bamboo uh, foo lion the seller thought it might be 18th century he's absolutely right it's it's at least 18th century and it may have been older um, I'd have to look at it but this looks like a nice old bamboo carving uh, uh, it has there's a uh, sort of a baby foo here and the teeth are all nicely done this was an interesting interesting thing it was only a couple of inches uh, long an inch or two long two inches long I think but it had a good-looking old surface, from what I could see. He tends to under, he underlit his pictures in a few places, so I can't tell exactly about the color. But it looked like it had some decent age to it, and uh, it ended up selling for a thousand fifty-nine dollars. It was basically a toggle, very small. And these sometimes get confused. If you see these, sometimes these get confused with Japanese netskis. But uh, the style of that, that was Chinese, so you, 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 you have to sort of pay attention to the stylistic differences. But that was a good one. That was a nice one of a food line. And then over here to this, this was just a nice, very pretty, very good color, double panel of uh, precious objects. And it was a repeat scene, which was nice and hung vertically in these frames. I suspect some of this, this, some of this edging and so forth was added maybe a little later in the early 20th century. But the, uh, the needlework on this was quite good. Nice, tight needlework. Here it is. Here's a good detail shot of those, all, that, all that needlework in there. Sometimes they called this the blind stitch. There was this uh, old wives' tale that there was a, the forbidden stitch or the blind stitch because they believed that w women that wove with it would lose their eyesight because of the work was so fine. And uh, sellers in China back in the early 1900s, I mean the early tw uh, 20th century rather, late 1900s, early 20th century, would tell pe people that this was very special because it was done with the forbidden stitch or the blind stitch. And then others claim that the, the forbidden stitch is, is a, a stitch that could only be used in the imperial court. Neither of those stories are true. But at any rate, it, it was exceptional work. And the, the pair of panels ended up selling for $455. Nice looking, though. Very nice. And then this, the Guangxu uh, Hu form vase that had been drilled out 
had this uh, bluish celadon ground to it. Uh, this is a more accurate picture of the color. <clears throat> um, th this sh shows you what happens when you use indoor lighting that isn't uh, high-grade photo lighting and you don't white balance your camera. It comes out looking very blue, all right? But when you took it out in natural sunlight, bang, that's the color. That's, that is the color. All right, it's because you're in full spectrum light. You see the details, the crackle, and all that business. And I think he, he, he didn't do himself any favors by having only one picture that showed the true color of the thing. Uh, but at any rate, it brought $4,411, which I think was a little bit on the light side for these. But um, the, I, think the color, I think the photography didn't do him any favors. So that's the way it goes at times. All righty. And now let's uh, take a look over here and see what's coming up. Okay, we're going to click through a couple pictures. There we have it. This is something I'm going to put in the newsletter this week because I just happen to like it. He, he says it's an 18th century Chinese pig woodblock print. I don't think it's 18th century. I think it's probably a, a, a later 19th century one. But I like animals in Chinese art, animal forms, because they, 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 can, they tend to have these very sleepy eyes with long eyebrows eyelashes. They did elephants the same way. The elephants have these same sleepy eyes, but he's very cartoonish looking, big, fat, round, happy stomach. And he's got Yang, uh, Yang and Yin characters repeated on him. And uh, he's hanging over his little water bowl. Just a cute, just an adorable picture, all framed and ready to go on old paper. It is an old painting, maybe mid 19th century, but at any rate. It's up to $66, and it closes in about a week. Uh, Woolworth uh, down in um, uh, Rhode Island has this for sale. They're good dealers. They've been around a long time. And uh, those are nice. That's, a, that's just a nice picture. If you, want to get, if you like to get something nice to hang on your wall, that would be it. And then there's this, this very nice Famille Rose Teaport, Chinese export, about 1775 to 1790, somewhere in there. Uh, good Famille Rose decoration. The handle looks okay. I didn't see any cracks here or here. Often when you look at these teapots, you'll notice a crack either at the top and more so at the bottom in here. You'll see a hairline. It's just from being grabbed harshly and it creates a little crack and the crack grows and it turns dark and hairline handle. Okay. And uh, it's up to $16. It's got 21 hours to go. It closes tomorrow. And I think anything under $300 for that is a steal. So uh, check that out. And this was something that our friend Tony over in uh, Scrap Dixon is his username. He's a nice guy. Uh, he's an English guy living in France. And he put this up, this very interesting little open salt. He thinks it might be Kung Shi period. I can't really tell from the pictures, but it's an old one. But what's unusual about it is the form. Uh, those of you that have seen uh, China trade uh, export uh, salts um, uh, know that they generally have legs. They're, they stand up a little bit. But this one is sort of compressed. It has this sort of squared inner wall. I think it's just a really interesting piece of uh, uh, early porcelain. It's clearly 18th century. It could well be Kang Shi. Uh, here's a shot over the top of it. But this is a very unusual form, very unusual form, um, uh, uh, open salt. really is. And uh, it's only up to $12 and two days to go. If you collect unusual export porcelains, you really ought to look at this. Because uh, I, I can't recall actually having seen this, this, this type uh, ever. Uh, it's just very unusual, but I like it. So check it out. <clears throat> and then on to this, there's a nice uh, um, uh, Chinese, uh, si uh, Japanese silver mirror um, up here. Here we go. And uh, it's a, 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 just a, a mirror frame, rather, or a picture frame. It's a good one. And, he, and this is a Scrap Dixon selling this, too. And this isn't a, an auction item. But it's a buy it now, and it seems very reasonable, $250. We're going to put a couple of buy it nows once in a while in here because we're noticing more and more people are, are going after buy it nows because the prices, if you're used to buying at auction, sometimes when you go over to the buy it now area on our website, which is, which is on the home page, you're going to see things in there that say, boy, that's a pretty good price because you're used to seeing auction prices and often auction prices are higher than buy it now prices and I've said that in many videos pieces will sell for eight hundred dollars and I'll say gee if the guy had put that up for auction he probably would have gotten fifteen hundred and and the reason that they sit there unsold some of you say well if it's such a good deal how come nobody's buying them the reason is is that when people search on these sites they often exclude buy it nows for some reason because they don't want they want less to go through and they look for auction items because they think they're going to find themselves a bargain and I'll tell you right now you're going to find some good buys and buy it nows and and uh, those of you out there that use the buy it now section know exactly what I'm talking about because I hear from dealers that that use the buy it now feature as much as or more than they use the auction feature 
So you want you do want to check that out, and it's it's on it's on the home page, under those blue boxes uh, down at the bottom that, that open up, and you can go in and poke around. All right, now on to this. This is a nice pair of big vases. Look at these. These are beautiful first half of the 19th century uh, 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 rose mandarin. These are not rose medallion. They are rose mandarin. And a nice groundwork, beautiful detail. Uh, we'll pull it in, and there it is. The nice, there's a little sort of a uh, terracine. Uh, nice gilding in the hair, highlighting the, of, of the people. The faces are well drawn. The colors are nicely contained in their outlines and all that business. Here's a picture of the bottom. Uh, it has a felt pad attached to it, so it's hard to see perhaps, but uh, uh, there, there they are, okay? And um, we'll see how these do. They're up to $1,750. They close Monday, but they're pretty good size. These were decent size. They were, uh, what are they? I hate how nobody puts the dimensions. These are 25 inches tall. They were big. <clears throat> All right, so you, if you're a vase buyer, you want to check those out if you like rose mandarin. And uh, then this, this is a, a, a nice looking, um, uh, uh, a, I think it's a Dao Guan marked bowl. Yeah, Dao Guan bowl, Famille Rose. Uh, it's got some nibbles around the edges. It's a little bit rough, but it's a nice example. And what's unusual about it is the script is written horizontally instead of um, done with a square seal. And I saw it, I was a little bit curious about it. I wasn't even sure if it was an authentic piece, but I think it's okay. It just has an unusual execution of the seal mark, of the, of the rain mark, because the work looks fine. The work is good. Um, that looks very nice. The faces are done well. The figures are all done nicely. The horses, the faces of the horses, the horses look like hobby horses. They're sort of square looking and all that. I like I like this bowl. And it's up to $147 with three days to go. It'll, I suspect it'll go up a, a bit, a good bit more. Uh, probably another five to 700, I suspect, anyway. And uh, then over here on, uh, uh, oh, this was something that was over on Katawiki last week, was this very nice Wan Lee bowl that sold for 300 pounds. I just liked it. I liked, I liked it with the deer on I like deer patterns. As, every, as many of you know, I like animal, animals in Asian art, you know, deer, horses, goats, chickens, sheep. I think they're, they're fu always fun to see how they get depicted. And uh, the other one was I wanted to mention this was that very nice crack bowl that was, I thought, quite unusual a couple of weeks ago that had this, uh, this pattern of lotuses in the center. And I, don't, I couldn't remember last week whether or not I brought it up because it sold on the 13th, which was just about a week ago. And um, I didn't know if it closed by the time we did the video. But at any rate, it, it sold for 1,500, um, uh, what is that, Swiss, uh, 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 oh, excuse me, Liechtenstein uh, uh, dollars. So I don't know how much that is. That works out to about, I guess, $1,300 or something. But a nice bowl and a good size one. And then over here, on the um, uh, those of you that buy Netskis and so forth, if you if you if you use the member pages, you check in Valuable this week, you're going to find a huge Netski collection uh, that's up there right now, and it's linked to even more. We couldn't get them all on the page; there were so many. But some very good Netskis, and the estimates are anywhere from five hundred to five thousand dollars. Some good Japanese works. And we've added a whole bunch of other things this week. And we have some things that just closed in the last couple of days that we haven't gotten to. And we'll be pulling them off and updating the, uh, that page. Okay. And uh, here are some things that are closing on Invaluable in the next uh, – uh, uh, it actually closes – this closes today. This nice big Ming jar is on there, and that closes today. And you have this, this very nice uh, Arita blue and white uh, 17th century plate. This, I, th this auction – uh, Strauss over there uh, got, I don't know, they must have had somebody who collected VOC Japanese uh, wares because they, they've got a number of them and, they, and they're all interesting. And uh, then there's the uh, Gibsons has uh, this very attractive pair of Kung Shi plates and so forth and uh, a bunch of other things that sold during the course of the week and so forth. It's a typical week. It was a busy week, even though there are going to be very few live public auctions for the foreseeable next couple of months. All right. I think you're going to see if you were planning on attending auctions uh, in the spring, you're going to be, I'm afraid, rather disappointed. So get used to the idea you'll be doing most of your buying online and through online auctions. And uh, uh, if you haven't signed up for the uh, eBay Today, uh, eBay newsletter page or for the uh, uh, global member pages, the, the, the eBay Today page in Catawiki and all that is free. But the global pages cost a couple of bucks a month. But at any rate, you, you, you might want to get that uh, get used to doing that for the foreseeable future until things calm down. Uh, and I think, th I think they're going to get there sooner than later. Let's all hope. 
All righty. And thanks so much for watching. If you haven't uh, subscribed to us yet on YouTube, please do. We do a video at least once a week, sometimes a couple a week like we did this week. And um, with the time we have on our hands, who knows, we may do another one and we do another extra next week because they are fun to do. All right. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe. Spend time with your family. Do some online shopping, of course, and uh, uh, just uh, take care of yourselves out there until this thing gets blown over, blows by, and uh, uh, life gets back to normal. All righty. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.